Um, hello, video diary. It's me. <laughs> um, looks like it's like super dark. I guess it's nighttime, but you know, not super dark. Um, so I watched the movie um, Le Eclipse, uh, the Eclipse. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not good at pronunciation, but whatever. Um, uh, which is an Italian movie um, by um, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Uh, his name is Michelangelo and T Antonio and Antonini, uh, and uh, I always get the name. I want to say Antonioni, but that's not it. Um, and it's the kind of considered. I mean, some people consider it the the final part of the trilogy, um, which makes up La Ventura. Um, there's another one. And then, but some people also consider it uh, the third of a four-part series, with the last one being Red Desert. Um, uh, they all kind of share similar themes of alienation and um, uh, love and connection and, or lack of connection, right? Lack of love, lack of kind of any kind of uh, human right uh, emotion other than just like brief moments of joy and things like that um on we right is a, is a key emotion here and i think that one thing that i really enjoyed about this movie is um i think it did a really good job of uh critiquing a certain kind of um upper class or rich person and their lack of concern for just things of the world, things um, that uh, there's a scene in 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 the movie um, where the main character she goes to a party and then she randomly is uh, like dressed in blackface and is like dancing like a like like a supposedly right supposedly like a like an African person would um, for the enjoyment of one of her friends who's from. Uh, from Kenya um, and uh, and then that friend proceeds to talk about like you know the the monkeys right um, and so it's like horribly uh, racist right but um, just these people's talking they're so casual about it right um, and just the fact that underlying a lot of these people's riches there are a lot of scenes set in um, in a uh, mm, uh, uh, like not a Wall Street, like it's like a, a a trading place for for stocks and stuff like that, um, in Rome. So right, so I guess it is a Wall Street, but just like a, a an Italian version of that. And so like underlying a lot of these themes of alienation and ennui are these um, the fact that this society is based on this racism, this colonialism, which is so casual that they don't even like think about it, and they just. Um, do these kind of things without thinking of their impact on other people or um, you know part of their discussion um, the racist discussion that they have is that these these countries are, are kind of wanting their independence right which means something right to the West um, uh, um, financially right because otherwise they they wouldn't care if it didn't affect them financially um, and I think the movie does does quite a bit to talk about this, these kind of aspects, you know, kind of underneath the society running through it, um, along with just the general ennui and just the feeling of hopelessness in the face of, of uh, a post uh, post Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, world, right? Um, there's headlines at the end of the movie about, um, you know. Uh, About nuclear war and things like that and a lot of it's set in Rome but so much of it is empty devoid of people almost like this is some kind of strangely post-apocalyptic world but without the apocalypse having happened um, it's such an interesting movie uh, the director I've heard this is the only film I've watched by by them um, so I've heard is drawn to these kind of open spaces no I've watched the passenger with Jack Nicholson um, but he's drawn to these empty spaces, even in, you know, great city, big cities like London and Rome, right? Um, and that to me is also really interesting. Um, 
But one thing that I found the most striking about the film, well, two things that I found, is the, the patience of the film. It's a very patient movie, right? It takes a while to get into its uh, story, right? If, if you want to call it that. Um, it's like kind of meandering, but it's kind of keeping on these this track, right? But it's still kind of moving through um, almost in what feels like a one-to-one, -one, you know, to this person's day, though it's not quite that either. Um, and so it's a very patient film. It kind of lulls you in, it gets you going, it waits and waits and waits, and then action happens, right? There's no real action, but something happens, and then the movie jumps, and it's such an interesting thing. And I mean, if you're worried about spoilers, this came out in 1962, so, you know, whatever. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's such an interesting tactic to take. But then also another thing is it feels almost like a, uh, uh, it doesn't feel like an art film for some of it, right? It feels kind of like a melodrama, right? Or or it feels like it took the mores of, of typical filmmaking and it kind of moved those around into something um, new and interesting and strange. And I think that that kind of uh, appeals to me as, as a poet, right? Um, part of what I want to do with my poetry and with my project as an artist and, and, and hopefully with my career is moving through some of the typical poetry forms and ideas, right? I don't, I'm not drawn to concrete poetry or to digital projects or to, to art projects, right? or to mix media or things like that. Um, the most is like collage interests me. But for my own poetry, I'm drawn to, to, to typical lines and sentences and structures like that. But what I want to do is, is embed the strange, the weird, the, the disconcerting into those forms. And I think that that's why a lot of people feel a tension when reading my poetry is, um, that they feel like this poem should be doing something that they're used to, but it's not, right? Um, and I think that's intentional, right, on my part. Uh, I think that. I know that that's intentional on my part, right? Um, but it makes it more difficult for these poems to kind of, uh, you know, find an audience, I think, because they're, they're, they're intentionally kind of using the disquiet right, uh, uh, that you feel when you're seeing something that is hitting some points but not quite hitting all of those um, like you're used to. And um, that's kind of like what La Eclise does for me and like what a lot of art films I think do is they take typical forms and they skew them just enough to where they feel, uh, you feel kind of uh, a disquiet. Um, and it's interesting how so many, uh, I think of like a, a Bergman film like Persona, right? Um, or even Cries and Whispers, where it's not a horror movie, right? There's nothing horrific in it. Or even a movie like uh, David Lynch's Mulholland Drive, right? It's not a horror movie, but there's moments in it where you feel deeply unsettled, right? Um, deeply um, estranged from from what's going on on the screen and from your your own life right in that moment um it's it's a it's a it's a it's a definite weird feeling as in like weird fiction um it's an eerie kind of displacement from the world and from the typical forms and i think that's kind of like what i want to do with my project as a poet right um, I was thinking earlier today about just kind of the poets that I love and that, that I wanted to build off of them so that way some uh, that way someday somebody may build off of me and I become something that um, is a model which is not quite as disquieting or strange as somebody else moving beyond me. Um, I think that that would be a legacy I could get behind. Right, and it may be a legacy that I never have. Anytime you're talking about legacy, you're talking about something that um, is not assured, right? Um, but one thing is, is that I can keep, you know, keep on keeping on with with what I think is important in my work. Um, all right, uh, thank.
Thanks, video diary. <laughs>